There came a time when there was great movement upon the earth and above it, when the destiny of men and gods was hammered out upon the forge of fate, when monstrous wars were brewed and mighty deeds were designed. And there rose up in this time, which was called the Age of the Young Kingdoms, heroes. Greatest of these heroes was a doom-driven adventurer who bore a crooning rune blade that he loathed. His name was Elric of Melnibane, King of Ruins, Lord of a scattered race that had once ruled the ancient world. Elric, sorcerer and swordsman, slayer of kin, despoiler of his homeland, white-faced albino, last of his line. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam, aka Hambar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler free review of Michael Moorcock's Stormbringer. Stormbringer is the last of the Elric saga, number 6 of 6, 8 of 8, and soon to be 9 of 9. Uh, fate runs its inexorable course for the albino sorcerer emperor of Melnibane, his friends, and his world. It is the great conclusion of the Elric saga, um, this one actually going more into epic fantasy territory, uh, more than the rest of the series, which is of course sword and sorcery. Um, and this is, of course, just one chapter of The Eternal Champion, though. And this is its ending. Now, Stormbringer, if I am correct, was actually the first of the Elric novels written. Originally released in 1965. Um, for some reason, Moorcock decided to write the end of this hero's story at the beginning. Um, which is actually not super far-fetched. I, When I write Sword and Sword myself, I have a tendency to kill off my characters. You know, and then... Uh, later on, I can go back and uh, tell more stories about him. And I guess that's what Moorcock did. So we have a uh, prologue here, of course, sort of, it's called the Sorcerer and Swordsman. Um, Elric is with his wife, uh, Zarazinia. Uh, though, uh, well, that is until she is kidnapped, <laughs> which happens right at the beginning. So don't worry, it's not a spoiler. Uh, Elric must reclaim Stormbringer to rescue her, um, since at the beginning of the story, he has basically retired for a little bit. Um, the addicted sorcerer emperor um, is faced with the doom of all worlds and again this more epic installment um, compared to the personal conflicts of the previous stories um, Elric uh, he still cares for himself and the few he loves so he does and he does care actually about the end of the world uh, which you know in some ways you think he might not but he does um, this is really the end of his fate, though, as well, since he is a pawn of fate um, rather than truly his own man. It's quite uh, sad, tragic, uh, if you look upon it that way, at least. Uh, there are four parts in the story this time instead of the normal three. Uh, Dead Gods, Homecoming, Black Swords, Brothers, Sad Giant Shield, and Doomed Lords Passing. Um, I think Elric is actually inspired by the story of Kulervo. Uh, like Turin Drumbar. Um, and similarly, also uh, Paul Anderson's The Broken Sword is an inspiration for Elric. Um, but it's di very different from these stories in many facets. Um, I would recommend you go read both of those if you haven't. Uh, but we do see uh, friends and many others perish. And we see you know, a sword, Stormbringer, uh, striking for itself and drinking souls that you really wish it would not drink. Uh, law and Chaos clash more directly than in previous books, and both have good and bad and are in held in conflict and balance eternally. Uh, so it's interesting uh, how the world kind of ends and survives. I don't know. You have to read about it. Um, it is cool, though, actually, because what we get from the multiverse this time is, has like a Roland, actually, who's a paladin of Charlemagne, of course, from the Song of Roland. Um, but again, this is a story about being bound by fate, um, because fate has its say, right? Uh, it is inexorable. And in the end, everything will die. And that's the tragic tale of Elric. And that triumph is tainted by death and the baseness and f of flaws and struggle, eternal struggle. And that's really the tragedy of Stormbringer. Um, I think overall this one was my second favorite of the eight. Uh, number one would still be the Sailor and Seas of Fate. It's just, it's not been supplanted. But this one is really good. And if it hasn't become obvious here when I mentioned eight of eight and uh, nine of nine and six of six, 
that I am talking about, Stormbringer, the original publication, not the second volume called Stormbringer, which has four novels in it, which are The Vanishing Tower, The Revenge of the Rose, The Bane of the Black Sword, and Stormbringer. I'm talking about the last Stormbringer here. So um, those are my thoughts, actually. So I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I will leave you with that. It has been great to cover this whole saga on my channel. Um, and hopefully I will be covering the little bit of Elric there is left with the Dream Quest trilogy, Elric at the End of Time, which I know is not completely just Elric stories, and most certainly uh, Citadel of Forgotten Mists, which comes out in December of 2022. But this has been Liam Williams Lyceum. I will catch you next time.